ಓಮ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕ ಚಕ್ಷುಣ್ಣಿಲಿಚಂಯಸ್ಮೈಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ First, Lord Krishna is explaining about Sattva Gun. In Sattva Gun, one is somewhat detached from gross materialistic. One is more concerned with the intellectual or spiritual platform. He's not so much concerned with getting a lot of money and having a big position. He tends to be peaceful and self-controlled. So this mode of life is better than others. Two other modes are Raja Gun and Tama Gun. In Rajaguna, one is very passionate, overly active, very active to get facilities for material enjoyment, to get money, power, and position, and very interested in sense enjoyment. Then lower than this is Tamagun, in which uh, someone is simply in very low consciousness, just like an animal, just uh, just like you see a tree is completely ignorant. So you see sometimes people, their, their level of intellectual understanding is not much more than a tree they have no particular goal in life they're always miserable and depressed they sleep as much as they possibly can often they're uh, addicted to intoxication or also another symptom of the mode of ignorance is uh, unnecessary cruelty violence out of one's uh, very low consciousness from time to time fits of anger will manifest and, and without any reason uh, or control will simply perform very cruel activity. So, Sattva Gun is much better than Raja Gun. And Raja Gun is much better than Tama Gun. But here, Krishna uses the word Bhagnati, that even the mode of goodness conditions one to material life. So, what to speak of the lower modes of nature? In the modern age, the mode of goodness is not at all being encouraged. Uh, mostly people are encouraged to develop Rajagun. Work hard, get a lot of money, get ahead, make progress, and purchase many items for your enjoyment. This is Rajagun. And because in Rajagun there's no... In Rajagun there's no sense control, there's no sense of control, so one can easily fall into the Tamagun. Actually, even in Rajagun, uh, if one follows the Vedic directions, there's some control, there's some direction. But in modern society, there's, uh, there are no such Vedic injunctions being followed. And the philosophy of life that is being taught is uh, totally a product of ignorance. And, uh, I think for philosophy of life, you said tattva jnana, but it's not actually tattva. What, they, they're, what, what they're promoting is atattva jnana, or tattva ajnana, either way. You yeah. They're promoting that life has come from chemicals. So this is not tattva, this is not what is. Tattva means what is. This is simply ignorance. So, uh, from ignorance, from ignorant ideas, people fall into the mode of ignorance, tamagun. If they think that, well, I'm simply a bunch of chemicals, then what is there to live for? There's no meaning to them. They take, therefore, they take shelter of intoxication. And uh, ignorance, TV is mostly propagating complete foolishness. And people are attracted to this, just like cartoons. This is completely meaningless. This is the mode of ignorance. Or sports, it's completely meaningless. But people attach meaning to it, although it has no meaning. So this is ignorance. Now generally the mode of goodness is recommended. Because in the mode of goodness, one is supposed to lead an, a life that can elevate one's consciousness. A person in the mode of goodness will certainly not eat meat or fish or eggs or take intoxication or engage in any such sinful activity. So we find that the devotees in the Krishna conscious movement, they follow all these principles. In Sattva Gun, one should rise early in the morning, bathe regularly. These are all symptoms or, or characteristics of a person in the mode of goodness. However, following these principles in themselves are not sufficient for liberation. Because even if one rises early in the morning and is peaceful, and calm and self-controlled and doesn't engage in gross sinful activities, without knowledge of Krishna, he still remains in ignorance. And there's a tendency, if one is living in the mode of goodness, without Krishna Bhakti, to become proud and to think, I'm better than others, I'm more knowledgeable than others, I'm more cultured than others, I'm more self-controlled than others. So when he starts to think like this, this pride, garva, that starts to enter. 
and pride that is a symptom of the mode of passion Rajagona. Uh, and then uh, with that that pride that means just like in Rajagun one is trying to show oneself superior to others so he becomes becomes caught in the mixture of Rajagun in this way in material life one can, in different phases or even in different lifetimes, be affected more or less by different modes of material nature. One in the mode of goodness can, can become thus influenced by the mode of passion. And then when he becomes someone who becomes situated in the mode of passion, as I explained, they can also fall down into the mode of ignorance. And then someone in the mode of ignorance, also by associating with someone in the mode of passion, they may gradually come up to the mode of passion. Again. And someone in the mode of passion who's working very hard to try to get results you may become disappointed and withdraw from that kind of life and become situated in the mode of goodness. So in this way, one goes from goodness to passion to ignorance up and down like this. Therefore, although Satvagun is better, it is recommended not simply to be in Satvagun, but to come to the position of Krishna Bhakti. That is called Shuddha Satva. Satvang Vishuddham Vasudeva Shabditam. Position of Shuddha Satva, purified goodness, that is the position of Vasudev, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, Sattva-guna in the material world is also always subject to be influenced by Rajaguna or Tamaguna. But when one becomes situated in Shuddha Sattva, that means free from the influence of the modes of material nature. So that is possible by Krishna Bhakti. So, a Krishna Bhakti, that develops from the platform of Sattva-guna. sattva is more... Uh, favorable for developing Krishna Bhakti than the lower modes of nature. But it is not of itself the goal. Uh, this point that one in Sattva Gundi may gradually become influenced by pride. Therefore, in Krishna Bhakti, the first point or the basic principle is to develop humility. In this material world, everyone is proud. We have nothing to be proud of. But we tend to be proud, nevertheless. Especially if one, the few or the small percentage of the population who have a lot of money, who are well known and who are in a high position, they tend to be more proud. But you'll find in a group of drunkards, who is the biggest drunkard, he's proud, and I'm the greatest drunkard. Everyone becomes, on the slightest pretext, we become proud. But this pride binds us to the material world. So in Krishna Bhakti, the first principle Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught, Chunada Pisu we should consider ourselves lower than the grass. Which actually, if we consider ourselves in relationship to Krishna, then we are no greater than the grass. Krishna is so much greater than us. So, uh, compared to Krishna, we are no more significant. Compared to Krishna's position, our position is no more significant than that of grass. So in Krishna Bhakti, we are in, uh, endorsed to always remember this. Unless we develop this uh, mood of humility, we can't actually progress in Krishna Bhakti. We may be practicing Bhakti, but the tendency to be influenced by the lower modes of material nature will always manifest itself. So by regularly hearing about Krishna and associating with devotees, especially devotees who are cultivating this mood of surrender to Krishna, and then we can become strong in Krishna Bhakti. Otherwise, if, even if we are practicing some kinds of spiritual progress, but without this mood of bhakti and surrender, then we won't make proper advancement. And we will tend to fall down. And we see that in the modern age, that uh, many people, uh, they follow some kind of spiritual path, uh, but they're not able to be free from the lower modes of nature. They can't even give up tea or coffee, which are actually unnecessary unnecessary sense gratification. But uh, because there's no strength in their sadhana, they're not getting inspiration from sadhana, so they get inspiration from coffee. Feel, when I drink coffee, I get some boost. But this is not required. This is artificial. The real boost comes from chanting Hare Krishna. So here Krishna is describing in detail the effects, the effects of the modes of material nature. Devotees should lead a very pure life. And the basis of that purity is their dedication to Krishna which will, if one sticks to the principle of serving Krishna, then he will always remain pure. And as a result of that cultivation of purity, then at the end of life he will go to the pure abode of Krishna. But if one is not fully pure, if he's only in the material sattva 
and he must come back to this material world. So all the different topics in Bhagavad Gita are to teach us to surrender to Krishna. Here, Krishna is describing three modes of material nature with the aim of encouraging us to get free from the effects of the modes of material nature right. and to surrender fully to Krishna, who is himself always free from the modes of material nature. So one who surrenders to Krishna by the mercy of Krishna, he also gets free from the modes of material nature. Hare Krishna. Any question about this? There is a general conception that the essence of Gita is do your job to leave the rest to you. Well, if people translate the question, well, if people would do that, that would be good. Do the job and give the result to Krishna, but they're not doing. It. However, that's not the highest teaching of Gita. That is very clear at the end of Gita what Krishna says. Param Shinume Paramam Krishna says, "Now I'm going to speak to you the most confidential knowledge, which is my topmost instruction, and that instruction is." Krishna says, always think of me, become my devotee, worship me and bow down to me. Nam Namaskaru in Sanskrit. Nam Namaskaru. Nam Namaskaru. So uh, mostly people, they want to avoid what is the message of Gita. So they interpret it according to their own, whatever they want. They say you can interpret Gita in any way you like. Or you can do, but then it's not Bhagavad Gita. Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita with a particular intention. Arjuna was confused and he asked Krishna to give him some definite, clear instruction. So Krishna never told Arjuna that now I'm speaking to you Bhagavad Gita, uh, then after you've listened to it, you just make up your own philosophy and do whatever you like. And Krishna didn't say to Arjuna that, hey, this is my idea, what's your idea? Arjuna approached Krishna, please instruct me. Krishna acted as the guru of Arjuna. So guru-disciple relationship is not one of mutual discussion that, uh, you know, I've got this idea, now you think up your idea. <laughs> guru means one who knows. And Krishna is the original guru. Krishna Vande. So if he's not Jagat Guru, then why should you listen to Bhagavad Gita? And if Krishna doesn't know what he's talking about, then why should we listen to Bhagavad Gita? So Krishna has a very clear instruction. And it's very clear from Bhagavad Gita what that instruction is. But people don't want to follow. They like to say, ah, yes, I'm a follower of Bhagavad Gita. They like to say that I'm a follower, but they don't like to follow. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita as it is, presenting the message of Bhagavad Gita exactly as Krishna has spoken. What happens if you people say, well, just do your work? Uh, they, well, they're, anyway, they're doing that. And what do you need Bhagavad Gita? And that's what's happened. People, they don't know Bhagavad Gita. Or even if they know it, you'll find people, they can quote so many shlokas, but they have no idea what it's all about, what it actually means. Now certainly in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjuna to do your work, don't be attached to the result. But that's only part of the complete understanding. That's not the whole understanding in itself. It's just like someone, a child goes to school, and the first day they learn one plus one equals two. So if they think, so they come back from school, so what did you study today? So I learned mathematics. So that's it. I, I went to school and I learned mathematics. So, you know, I don't need to study anymore. I already learned mathematics. One plus one equals two. That's mathematics. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's true. Can't say it's not true. But uh, simply knowing that without knowing the broader body of mathematics is not very useful. And if you think that this is the highest understanding of mathematics, then actually you're a fool. So similarly, uh, people, oh, they say things like this, that in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, just work like an ass. <laughs> when I first came to India, I was, I, I met, I was traveling in Maharashtra, so one man said, I, I, I don't need this book, I already know what is the meaning of Bhagavad Gita. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says to work hard and do your duty to your family. <laughs> I was surprised. Because I also read Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> and I found it out that Krishna is telling Arjuna to kill his family members. <laughs> so it's not that Everyone's uh, being instructed to kill their family members. That's also a misunderstanding. But uh, the point is that you have to understand what is in Bhagavad Gita. It's not that you just hold the Bhagavad Gita and say that this is Bhagavad Gita and everyone should simply work like an ass. You see, I'm holding Bhagavad Gita. So this is the meaning of Bhagavad Gita. This is not logical. You have to understand actually what is Bhagavad Gita. 
So why don't you all learn, study this Bhagavad Gita as it is? Good idea? Any other question? Yeah. There are two different types of yoga that are actually to be equal to that. Mm-hmm. One is called the Sankhya Yoga, the other one is the Buddhi Yoga. Mm-hmm. Suppose the person practices the Sankhya Yoga, whether it will lead to the Yoga or the Sabhavara or even the Sathavara. You want to translate the Buddhi Yoga? You want to translate the question? Well, practically, even to practice Sankhya Yoga, one has to be predominantly in Sattva Guna, even to practice in the first place. However, in atheistic, Sankhya means to analyze, literally means to count, to analyze the material world. So, uh, there are two schools of Sankhya philosophy. One is Ishvaravadi, and the other is Nirishvaravadi. So, those who, who study the material world, and recognize the presence of God, they will be elevated. But if after studying everything, you think that everything is, there is only matter within the universe, then this is atheism. So this leads to downfall. Mm-hmm. Just like in modern science, they say that there is no, there is no uh, supernatural cause, there is no transcendental cause. Jagad, Ahur, and Ishwaram, the the atheists say there is no God in control of the universe. So then they go, then they come to gross sense gratification. So this, uh, the wrong philosophy leads to fall down. Even if uh, one is cultivating a philosophical approach to life, which means the influence of the mode of goodness is there, if he has the wrong understanding, that will cause him to fall down. But nowadays, you can understand all these points anyway. What is Sankhya Yoga, Buddhi Yoga? People have no attachment with them. And they think yoga means some exercises to reduce the excess weight. So, better time mm. uh, Instead of every daily uh, hearing from a sincere, sincere devotee, still this influence of lower modes and pride is here. How to do in this situation? No, well, keep on going. The process works gradually. Shanai, Shanai, Rukhalamed. Dhriti Vritya Gita, and Krishna says in the Gita that gradually, step by step, with determination and intelligence, we should make progress. We can't expect that it will happen overnight. We should have faith in the process of Krishna Bhakti. On the other hand, we should be careful not to cultivate false pride. Otherwise, our bhakti can turn into something predominantly materially affected if we're not careful. If we are performing bhakti, but we're doing so to get the respect of others, then we don't actually develop, we don't develop love for Krishna.